Right, well, the, when the, I would say a word about Eco Congregation Ireland. Um, Eco Congregation Ireland is a church's environmental organisation strongly supported by UK Eco Congregation um, groups, where, where it's very strong, particularly in Scotland. And um, what they're trying to do is to make the churches more environmentally aware and more environmentally active and really being very successful. I used to be on their committee as the Quaker representative, but now I've been relegated to just doing a few bits of contract work, like assessing an, a, a church for an environmental award now again, and uh, an event such as this. So, um, but it's a great organization. Now, this evening I was asked to, I was given three questions to answer. Um, why is acting on climate change important to me? What are the aims and how do I feel about it? And what are my hopes for climate change in the future? But I decided I wouldn't start with any of those. I'd start by <laughs> telling you a little about, about what I'm doing myself and why I'm doing it. I'll go, I'll go back to them later. Um, well, first of all, I'm actually, I come from the conviction that if you're looking at sustainability and trying to make your own household sustainable and, and your own neighbourhoods sustainable in a small way, you know, the local, what you do yourself, you know, my, myself and my own sustainability, that the most efficient unit for, for sustainability is the, the local village community, your local community or your parish or something like that. And... Um, so that is where I'm putting most of my energy at the moment. It's, it's, you know, progress is very slow. It feels like you're doing very little. But I do feel it is the right thing to be doing, and I'm doing that. Um, for example, we're very basic, you know. My husband and I have hens, and we have a garden. And we sell our vegetables, vegetables locally. And the people that come to our door to get the vegetables and the eggs, they realize that you don't have to go to the supermarket for everything, that it is possible to grow them yourself and to rear animals yourself and to look after them. We're lucky we live in the country where we have land and our neighbors have land that they let us, let us overflow into. And also, we're getting to know the people. We're getting to know our neighbors who come to the door. It's, neighbors don't always know each other. And also, um, when I do the, my veg round up on the local housing estate, a new housing estate, I find myself introducing neighbours to each other because I've knocked on all the doors and I know all the people, <laughs> but they don't know each other, you know. And one of, the th one, of the, one of the really important things, I think, for people to do if wherever you are is to get to know your neighbours. You're missing out so much not knowing them. Um, another thing I do is I'm involved in Cork's local currency, um, Corklets. It's a county-wide currency. And I really believe um, that the local currencies, I wish we could expand Cork's currency to the whole of Ireland, gives an opportunity... <laughs> <laughs> gives an opportunity for people to create their own employment. And also, um, I'm sure that if local currencies were properly embraced and, embraced and properly used, there's huge potential for meaningful occupation, because I think full employment is a thing of the past. But if people have meaningful occupation, and people without employment and without meaningful occupation are a dangerous commodity to have around, I feel. Um, and, and also, you can have a very good lifestyle by, by, by working on the local currency system. You need your euros, or euros as well. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't, I'm not that naive. Um, and you get wonderful friends from... It's quite a different type of trading. I sell a lot of my vegetables for local currency. Um, the third thing that I do is I make biochar. I make biochar um, in my little room heating stove in my sitting room. Biochar is ground up charcoal. And 
Biochar can make two blades of grass grow where only one grew before. It also has huge potential as a, as a, for sequestering carbon in the ground. If, you're, if you have something quick growing, which you make into biochar, and then put it out into your garden, it improves your garden, and it very quickly takes the CO2 out of the atmosphere, into the biochar, into the ground, and it is sequestered there for at least a thousand years. Ordinary compost, it, it migrates back to the air in about five to ten years. And, but I won't say any more about that because it's my favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have leaflets at, on the crockery table at the back of the hall. So if you haven't already got one, they look like this. Please take one home with you. Um, I leave that time. What? Two minutes. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, why am I doing this? I'm a Quaker and a committed Christian. We're told that the two great commandments are to love God and your neighbor as, as yourself. For me, that's a no-brainer. Um, loving God for me means minding his creation, and loving my neighbor means keeping an eye out for him and not, put, not putting out so many addition, emissions that his delta or his low-lying island is flooded or that there did that their desert home is hopelessly killed, knocked by drought. Um, and also, in our Quaker tradition, George Fox, our founder, exhorted us to be patterns or examples in all countries, wherever we go, that our carriage of life may preach among all sorts of people. I hope that I, by attempting to live sustainably, I might be an example to others. Um, I'm going to have to jump over that bit. <laughs> Lastly, going back to community, I'd like to mention Alistair McIntosh, um, introduced to me by the St. Louis Sisters. He speaks hugely of community and rekindling community. He spoke of his life as a boy in the Isle of Lewis and how they, if the storms were there. They, everybody just, life continued as usual. Everybody had enough, enough of what they needed instead of just having a supermarket and the shelves being empty. He was, he, he, his, great, his great phrase is rekindling communi community and regeneration of community. Remembering, revisioning, reclaiming, old-fashioned Christian generosity, reconnecting people together with with the elements and with each other, belonging. What are my aims for the future? Um, I hope that we will all begin to get the process right, to do the right thing. Whatever the outcome will be, we cannot, we cannot have control over. But the thing to do is to start now to do the right thing. Um, and then lastly... What do other people think of what I'm doing? I think they regard me as being a little bit amusingly daft. <laughs> that was just fantastic. I... We don't think you're daft. 